Welcome to jazztime.com. This is Madison, and today we have a ladies Rolex to unbox for you. Now, this is a model number 179174. It's a brand new lady date just. It's 26 millimeters and considered a small. And it has a beautiful white mother of pearl dial with factory diamonds uh, for the hour markers and a Jubilee bracelet. Now what I'm going to do is walk you through the major components of this particular Datejust. I'm going to give you the 360 degree view including how it looks on the wrist. I'm also going to point out for you who might want to consider this size Rolex what other sizes they might want to try uh, on as comparison and where you might want to consider going to buy this watch for the best possible price okay so why don't we start with the case so these date just watches they're often referred to specifically by their case size 26 31 41 for example now those numbers, they're actually referring to the diameter of the case size in millimeters, and that's not including the winding crown. So we're talking about the distance between my thumbs right here, when we say the 26 millimeter date just small. This is actually the smallest size that Rolex makes. And what we have is a 904L steel, oyster case and this is something that Rolex pioneered it's a system of waterproofing their watches by screwing down the bezel so on this watch we have a, a fluted bezel so this is the part all the way around here with the ridges that reflect the lighting really beautifully so by screwing down the bezel the case back so this part back here the case back is screwed down also, along with the winding crown here on the side. So all of that screws down to give us a watertight watch, a watertight case that's referred to as an oyster case. It uses a trip lock, excuse me, this one uses a twin lock double waterproofness system keeps this watch water resistant to 100 meters now this watch as far as the movement goes uses a 22 35 caliber mechanical or what's known as a self winding movement so that means that there aren't any batteries inside this watch that you're going to have to replace to keep this watch running when you first get it, or if you haven't worn it in a while, what you're going to want to do is you're going to need to wind it manually at the crown here. And I'm going to show you how to do that. What you're going to do is first, we're going to need to unscrew the crown. We're going to do that counterclockwise until it's free. It just popped right out of the screw threads. And so it popped all the way out there and we're going to wind it by turning it clockwise 20 to 40 times. So you're gonna, you can hear it, I'm not gonna wind it 20 to 40 times, but you can hear that turn 20 to 40 full turns. To change the date, then you're gonna pull out the crown to the first notch. I think you could hear that too. And you can rapidly set the date by turning the crown clockwise. Oops, sorry. There we go. And then when you want to set the time, you're going to pull it out to the last notch. Sorry, there we go, the final one and you can move the hands, they actually move bi-directionally, which is nice, it's a quick set, 
feature on these later watches, so they doesn't matter which way you turn it. Once you've got the time and the date where you want it, then you want to push it in and you want to screw it all the way down because you want to make sure this gets screwed all the way down because your watch is not water resistant unless it's screwed down. So it's pretty simple. Let's take a look at this bracelet here. Now this is called a Jubilee band. You find it on both men's and women's watches. It's kind of more like a traditional jewelry bracelet, not really a watch band. And it's made up of these five piece solid semicircular links. And if we take a closer look here, you can see that it's got this really beautiful mirror polish down the center. And the outer links, the larger ones, those have a brush polish going all the way around. And what I think is kind of cool too are the little details that you notice. Like when you turn the watch to the side here, you notice that the mirror polish, it's, it's there on the side of the watch as well, on both sides. So I'm talking about, oops, sorry about that. I'm talking about right here on the side of the bracelet. It's that same high polish that you see running down the center here. So then you want to figure out, okay, well, how do I get into this watch? Well, Rolex does a very good job. You almost can't see the clasp. There's the only visual indication of what's known as the concealed folding crown clasp. I have to say that's very aptly named is this tiny right here, Rolex crown that indeed you fold back like eh. it's a brand new watch so everything's very stiff you fold it back like that and the watch opens up just like how you would expect and it slides on quite nicely now some people might wonder okay well this is listen to the sound of this clicking in It's very secure on your wrist just because it's a beautiful, uh, delicate looking bracelet. It does not mean that Rolex has sacrificed anything by way of functionality. Uh, I've worn date jests with both Jubilee and Oyster bracelets and I have to say that I have never felt that one was more secure than the other, and I've never felt wearing either of them that it was gonna get caught on something and the watch was gonna get ripped off my wrist. Now, let's take a close look at this beautiful dial because let's be honest, it's really, these dials, it's really the first thing that people notice when they see your watch. Now, this is a 26 millimeter, 179, 174, all factory white mother of pearl dial with 10 D colorless VVS clarity diamonds that they're using for the hour markers. The fluted bezel that we mentioned earlier is 18 karat white gold all the way around and it catches the light beautifully. This entire presentation really grabs the light for such a small physical presence on the wrist it does a great job at subtly catching the eye the center hands so the minute and hour as well as the second hands those are white gold and so are the diamond settings for the hour markers. So what that means is they're never gonna tarnish, they're not gonna rust. The white mother of pearl, every single dial that Rolex makes is unique. It, the finish on the dial that we see 
uh, all mother of pearl dials from Rolex. The colors, the different tones that you see when you move them around, that's all natural. It comes from the iridescent lining from the inside of the particular shells and it's never altered or tampered with. The only thing Rolex does is they cut away that small window at the three o'clock position to allow for the date wheel and for, to allow for the Cyclops magnifying lens that we can see if we put it in profile like this because that magnifies that date wheel by about 2.5 times so you can read that date a little bit more easily. And this whole dial shimmers underneath a scratch resistant sapphire crystal. It's very hard wearing. There's no doubt that this is a beautiful and well-constructed classic watch. But I know that a lot of people are wondering is this the right size for me? I can't tell you that, but I can show you what it looks like on my wrist. And I can tell you that I am a delightfully average sized American woman and my wrist is representative of that. So this is what it looks like on me. And if I were purchasing it, truthfully, it's a little small. I know that I don't think this is from a trend standpoint that I say this, but it, it's just a bit small. What I can show you is this watch tends to be a very good fit for slim, extremely delicate boned women who really struggle finding a watch that from here to here doesn't overwhelm them. Any watch really can fit you. My day-to-day -day watch is usually a 40 millimeter men's watch. This is 26. Any watch can be sized properly as long as you don't get the lug overhang, as long as this distance isn't larger than your wrist bone. So let's compare it though to the watch nowadays that most women are choosing. This is the 31 millimeter Lady Datejust that I would say nine out of every 10 women who come looking for a new Rolex watch go with the 31 millimeter. So obviously this is a different configuration. We have a pink index dial. It's a, so this is a um, 178240 as opposed to the 179174 on my left hand side. And it has a smooth bezel, not fluted. But for size comparison sake, you can tell that this one really is quite larger. I'm going to show you what the pink 31 millimeter looks like on my wrist. S same Jubilee band, same concealed folding crown clasp. Man, that is difficult to say, but it just is much easier to read. It is a better fit for my wrist size and Judging by most other women who purchase watches from us, I would say unless you are extremely delicate boned, it's probably going to be the one you, you want to try on alongside the 26 millimeter. Try on the 31. The best advice that I can give is to go down to your local authorized dealer Try on these watches for yourself. There's only so much you can tell from a YouTube video. Try them on. These are investment pieces. You wanna know that you did your research. No matter what date just you choose, if you want it for the best price, I suggest you head over to jazztime.com. 
check out some of our other Lady Datejust videos. We've got our YouTube channel. There are tons of them. And you can go over to jazztime.com and check out the different prices, the different configurations. If you want ones with factory diamonds, we have them. If you want custom options for significantly less money, we've got those too. Leave me some feedback here. Let me know how I can help make the decision a little easier, okay? Thanks for stopping by. I'm Madison from jazztime.com.